Okay, we're going to do a lead down test today on this Harley Davidson uh, shovel head. Uh, what I'm going to need you to do here, Anthony, is actually spot the valves. You can just see the intake valve start to show itself playing a little peekaboo by the right side of the threads of the spark plug as you start to see a little gray color come into that black hole and then disappear. Turn this motor over to get uh, the front piston to be at top dead center. The way you're going to be able to tell it is you'll see the, the intake valve close and then once that piston goes all the way back up and it hits that center then tell me to stop and then we'll do a leak test. I'm going to do a little narrated review of what they're doing here to perform a leak down test. And here's the good news. This can be done on any four-stroke engine you'd ever want to do this on. Sport bike, four-wheeler, Ford, Chevy, Harley, Indian, you name it. You're always going to watch, as you're rotating the engine over, in the correct direction of travel, you're going to watch the intake valve open and close. Once the piston continues around and reaches the top of the cylinder, that will always be top dead center compression stroke. Can't change the order, can't do it any different, must be done that way. The tool is uh, a little loose. We'll see if the gauge will go up. And what you do is watch this. So as I tighten or loosen this gauge and try and see if I get a better seal. This is not, not quite tight enough, but Make sure you're terrible. holding the engine securely in position before applying the air pressure. I do not recommend applying full PSI in one shot, but to do it slowly a little bit at a time. Okay, we're going to figure out, we got leakage really, we figure 90 and 90. Okay. Go take those push rod covers off, and what are we going to verify? That it's in top dead center compression. So what should we be able to do with the push rods? Spin them. Just be able to spin them around. Here's a tip to hold the push rods up and out of the way so you can see them a little easier. Take a paper clip and bend it like a hook with a rubber band fastened to it to hold the push rods up and out of the way as shown in this next clip. We'll just take that, that fuel line out of the way. Take it. Grab both of those and then we got to try and find somewhere that we can uh, get some tension or whatnot. Pretty cool? Yep. Okay, now go ahead and rotate those. That one rotates. Now we said we're leaking out the intake pretty good, right? Yep. Okay, so we got one of two things. Either the piston is not in the right position or the intake valve is tight, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do this. Let's actually go ahead and diagnose this right now. That one does not. Okay, and this will help. Ready? Watch, get the camera close there. Oh, yeah. You hear the change? Yep. Yeah. So what's that tell us? Intake, leaking through the intake. Okay, and now the 100% leakage, this is good, keep recording on this. The 100% leakage is in the intake because the piston went down, so the crankshaft moved, it moved the camshaft, which moved the intake, and it, moved, it started to move into opening of the intake valve. Our students here, we're kind of unconventional here. Of we've got the motor set top dead center compression for leak down tests. We can rotate both the uh, push rods here, and you're going to see here that the the students have found this on their own in a previous little video they made of the rings were leaking bad enough that we're getting air bubbles in the oil tank, and that's the indicator the rings are bad. But we're going to check the intake. We're going to check the exhaust. We're going to check for a head gasket, and then we're finally going to check the tool, and you'll see how we're going to do that. So I'm just going to hold it in position versus trying to uh, hold the wheel or we don't have the primary off to grab onto the crankshaft so I'm going to hold this with the kicker to uh, be able to accomplish this just to speed it up. Go ahead. Any bubbling or air in here means that the rings aren't doing their job and so I couldn't see the gauge very well. Look at my hand. <laughs> you guys holding on to that baby? Hello. Uh, Let's take a look at the data so far. When you get a result like 100% leakage I always go back to the repair order and start to look at the details again of what we know about this vehicle. The customer stated that it ran fine when it was parked, possibly 10 years ago, and that about a thousand miles before that it had rings put in it. So I do have two conflicting concerns there that, well, if it ran fine when it was parked, it should run fine now with a simple tune-up. 
I also need to think about the fact that since work was done on it, that there's a possibility of a part failure or human error that just wasn't noticed or recognized when it was parked. Take all factors into consideration, but ultimately know that you need to perform your test accurately to verify what's actually going on inside that engine. You'd hate to take it apart telling your customer it had bad rings to find out that there is no such problem. Get it to leak. We'll try and, uh, let's do the oil to where it bubbles. And then we're gonna take the air away to where the bubble quits. And, and then put the air back on to make the bubble come again to prove that. It's called ABA testing. Okay. You create a result, take the effect away, watch the result go away, and bring it back in, prove it all. Come in and get on the oil tank. Okay. Put some air to it and we'll see. It's a good idea to apply your air pressure slow and not just dump 100 PSI in in one shot. There's bubbling. Keep going. I'm holding it pretty easy here with the brake. It's only like a thousand times easier. Go ahead and crank <laughs> it up. Okay. Look at how much better it's getting though being able to hold it. Can you rotate up? Okay. Alright, read that gauge. Get a light on that. Oh, you got the camera light. Okay. Alright, take the air away. Can you see the bubbling? Yep. Okay, take the air away. Hurry. Tell them to swing it quick. Right okay. Right Add the air again. Okay. Okay, so you can see it, it's coming and going. Okay, crank the tool up. Okay, now come around here and Lexi, why don't you test the intake? Okay, why don't you get your ear down there and you're gonna open and close it and see if it changes. Really much of a change? No. So that intake valve and Brent was rotating this isn't near as bad as we thought, right? Yep. Okay, so Leah, you're going to do the exhaust. If you haven't noticed in the video, we were being unsuccessful in holding that piston in the proper position and top dead center compression with the Kickstarter. We did have to go back to the more traditional way to jack the bike up, put the transmission in third or fourth gear, and then use the rear wheel to rotate the motor into that position. And then ultimately, I'm using the brake to hold the piston at that exact position so you can perform the test. What this does is it really eliminates having to pull any engine covers to be able to grab onto the crankshaft to turn the engine over. You could do this once again on multiple motorcycles. Take a sport bike, for example, that has the fairings on it and you don't want to take the fairings off uh, or anything else that's hard to access. Feel any pressure differences? No. no, so we're not too worried about the exhaust. And we're gonna get Jacob here, he's gonna use soapy water, and we have to go, we'll just film this side, but spray around the head gasket area. And if we saw bubbles there, that'd be a really good indication that our head gasket's bad. Why don't we go around to the other side and look at these different areas. So go in here and I can hear it in there and what I really want to be looking for is if I can see any bubbling of oil or anything. The crank seal's covered up. Get down in here at the camera. The crank seal's covered up but there's a chance I still might see oil bubbling behind the uh, rotor there. There might be a chance of that. That would tell me that crank seal's bad but I can, I can hear it in here pretty good. I'm going to get back in here. Here's a tech tip for you. I often find myself having to remind technicians to test their equipment. If you have a piece of equipment, whether it be electrical, mechanical, precision measurement, you name it, and you're getting a poor result, you know, lower than expected out of the service manual, I never just deem that motor or that part bad. I always try and back it up with another good known tool or a good known vehicle. If I find two tools produce that same bad result, it's a really good chance that that is actually the problem. I know this sounds overkill and, uh, and uh, extreme, but by doing this through any of the tests that I ever do, I find myself to be very uh, repeatable and very consistent when I diagnose a problem to actually be faulty. Getting a few bubbles maybe around that spark plug adapter? Sounds yeah. like it. Yep. Okay, so that's part of our leakage number. Now, go ahead and do the rest of the tool. Just prove a point here. Do the coupler. 
do the coupler, okay? Do the, the pipe thread going out of the gauge. Okay, those are, and do the gauge itself. Okay, that's good. Okay, so the point is, go ahead and take the air off for me, just uncouple it. Okay, Here, here's the point. Let me see that. Just think about this, our air is gonna come in on this side. This is the amount of air that we're supplying, and this is the outlet side for what's actually, what it will hold. There's show the difference of these two so that we can see where it's actually leaking. When this won't hold the, the inlet of say 90 PSI, PSI like we're doing, it's being able to record how much of that's leaking on this one, hence the idea of the leak down tool. If I have, I want you to think about this. So, we, so what did we end up with this time? I want to just say 45, yeah. that'll split the difference. So let's just say 45. We'll look at the, the camera in slow motion and see. If we're at 45, we said that, you know, an old bike, if we have 20% leakage, we're like, yeah, it'll run, but it's probably due for some uh, freshening up, right? But if I'm at 45 and I were leaking 5% at the spark plug adapter, and let's say this gauge was leaking, I got 5 or 10% leak in there, you could have a bunch of factors that the motor might actually be at that 20%, and that might that's the reason it might make sense that the customer says, no, nah, that bike doesn't run too bad, it just files spark plugs. You know, when you look at a broke motor with 40% leakage or 45% leakage, you, you, there's me physical mechanical damage that's going to be real obvious. But we're just trying to think outside the box to all the different areas. Now, don't we need to duplicate this process on the other cylinder? Yeah. Yep. All right, there you have it. There's a good example of uh, how not to do a leak down test and how to do a leak down test. I can't stress this enough. Uh, this test is is very overlooked. Even starting with just compression testing, you can see on some of uh, my other videos, I'll, I'll talk about that quite a bit. But what I really learned early in my career is that there's no $300 carb job that will ever fix a hurt motor, you know, that needs some other work. And so it's just so important to take the time to perform these tests on these four strokes and just really see where you're at. You know, the other, the other thing to think about in this, uh, is that the students were really struggling with the fact that, well, Shane, everything you taught us in theory, every textbook, every service manual says that, you know, somewhere between 10 and 14% is the maximum leakage number and you have to uh, tear the engine apart. That's true. That's a common spec that you're going to see out there is that 10 to 14%. But let's talk about the real world. You got somebody that, uh, you know, rides their bike on the weekend. Let's kind of shift off a of Harley here and say talk about dirt bikes or four wheelers to where they they just want to go run around on the weekend and they're okay with the fact that they might run through some spark plugs uh, because if the engine can't hold its integrity it's not going to be able to burn all that fuel and it's going to end up carboning up which ultimately fouls out the spark plug that's a little quick uh, tip there and uh, they say well geez I just I just use this once in a while. I just, you know, clean the carb, throw an air filter in it, throw some spark plugs and oil in it, and just uh, get me going for the summer or the month or whatnot. Sometimes we end up having to do that. But we need to explain that to our customer. We need to understand that, you know, if we take 300 bucks for a carb job or tune up and it lasts a month and the spark plugs are filed and they don't have the ability to change those spark plugs and they're going to be right back on your door again going, what did you do wrong? You charged me all this money. So I really want to stress clear communication to the customer that when you have those high numbers, uh, it's really risky. So what is the breakoff point? What's that look like? Is it 15%? Is it 20%? I don't know. My my experience around 20% or so, I, man, I usually get my customer to think, hey, if it's an off-road vehicle, you know, maybe you could chance it. But if it's a street vehicle, you're really risking the fact that you could break down and, and cause serious injury to yourself or someone else. So I really recommend against that. So what about this guy? 45% leakage. Are you wondering how it ran? Do you think the customer was telling the truth? What do you think about that? Pause there for a second. Well, here's what I think. I think that this thing ran 10 years ago when it got parked. There's no reason for this guy to BS about this. He's a... Uh, uh, students uh, uh, relation here and just uh, um, just throwing the facts down what I think is it probably didn't run very good maybe didn't notice it and uh, which is gonna be pretty exciting for my student to get this thing just uh, dialed in and done right 
And uh, here it is, a Harley Davidson's boy. Talk about a common vehicle that ring installation, piston uh, sizing, and uh, those procedures are, are done more often incorrect than correct. There are videos that explain that in more detail, so you can check those out. But uh, back to this one then, still 45% leakage, then what's going on? Well, you got to remember, we got a little bit of leaking in the valves, and we have uh, quite a bit going out the rings, because remember the oil tank was filling up? So we, we definitely have that leakage, but we got a big leak coming out that primary case. Do you remember that in the video? So I'm just going to use some rational thinking here and realize the fact that we know the rings aren't doing very good. And if it's only got a thousand miles on it, it should be doing a lot better than that. But what we definitely know is that that crank seal is a problem. So what a gift the rings leaking gave us to be able to show us that that crankshaft seal is not of the best integrity. Now, I don't know about you, but when I do an engine overhaul, it's getting new gaskets and seals, and I don't mess around with that. But this definitely uh, demonstrated that that seal needs to be serviced or replaced, or the crankshaft needs to be looked at, too. There's always that possibility that there's something wrong with uh, the bearing or uh, crankshaft itself, too. But it's a clue. It's a clue that we need to do something. It's not right. Uh, one clue that the customer might have had is that, uh, or another mechanic, is that when they go to uh, service that primary case, this is one that's been converted to a wet sump. Uh, one of the clues could be is that the oil level is way overfilled. And another clue would be that the oil tank reservoir seemed like it was consuming oil but not going out the exhaust. So you're, you're adding up all the clues, like I said, time and time again. It's just, uh, just a big puzzle. We're just looking at a bunch of pieces of it. We're looking at the data. And uh, by no mechanical theory, we know exactly... Uh, what that next step is that we need to take, where what part of the engine we need to improve that integrity on so that we can uh, get this back to the customer in the, in the form that they wish. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you like any of this stuff, subscribe. Uh, feel free to leave any comments or uh, any tips or things that you do yourself on your own projects. Keep wrenching. Have a great one.